Hi everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, and today we're going to talk about tube testing and what it involves. So right in front of you here is a tester, quite common, a B&K, this is a model 700. It tests a lot of, um, almost all modern tubes. Um, it does a better job at some than others, and it has what makes it so valuable for people like me, I have a small vintage tube store and I buy tubes by the hundreds and shipments are coming and going all the time. It has what's called a, a, a speed section up here. So it has a dedicated socket that'll do a number of tubes. So up here, socket 25 will do a very common tube that I specialize in, the 6SN7. I don't know if you can see it. Let's just turn that just a little bit over here. And I can very quickly test a 6SN7. Other tubes will have to go down into the lower section. And here you have to use dials to set the parameters. Here it's all hardwired and you can just go. So let's have some fun. I've got a bunch of shipments that came in recently. I'm always going to the pop post office, either things coming or going. So what do we got? Here's a big box. I better not show you all the details of the clients, the customers and stuff. It's huge. And I, I know what it is because I have a buy sheet for each box of stuff coming in so I can keep track of what I offered and what I paid. This is too big to break open on camera. But here's a little box that came in. It actually came in from the same bulk tube seller. A different deal. Let's just open it up. I happen to know Peter. I've been buying tubes for a long time from Peter and normally don't have any problems with packaging so let's let's see what happens in here let's see what we've got a bunch of small signal tubes those over here I have bags and bags of popcorn To get that out easily without having to undo all the tape. Peter loves tape. My grandfather, who was a cabinet maker, knew how to build things and when he taped a parcel, a Christmas or birthday gift, you almost needed explosives to get in. And Peter's reminds me of my grandfather. So here's a beautiful looking tube. It says on here that it's a 6CA7, which is the North American designation for the power tube. And underneath it actually says it's an EL34. In the previous episode on power tubes, we talked about EL34s. So this is an earlier EL34. And somewhere around here, hang on a second, folks. So that's an Electroharmonix EL34. This is a, the modern configuration that they've come up with. And here is a vintage configuration. You can see there's a huge difference. The pins are the same. Electrically, it's the same. The specifications will be very similar. And I still have to test this tube, but I suspect that this will be a beautiful sounding tube but it's a vintage tube, there's only so many of them left and we don't know anything about it yet. So let's get this modern one out of the road. You can see here that Peter tested it before he shipped it. But I don't know... Oh, that's the wee doggy. That's Jordy, by the way. You might see him wander in and out of the camera. 
Now if we're tube, I'm not sure how old this is, but I'm going to guess that this is a 60 year old tube. The first clue you get as to how much life is left in a tube is how much wear and tear the body is seen. It's just an indication. The lettering is all intact. This orange reddish RCA lettering never stayed very well and actually there's quite a bit of it there. Somebody's cleaned this tube. It's not dirty. But the base, the plastic, looks very new. And the pins look pristine. So, there's one of the tubes maybe we'll test. What else have we got here? Well, I happen to remember most of the tubes in the deal. There is a really beautiful tube. This is a Tesla EL34, very similar to the Electro Harmonix. Again, same. It's Electrically, it's identical. All three of these tubes that I've shown you are identical. And again, Peter's tested it. Tesla, the name Tesla, most of you know from the modern car manufacturer, doesn't have anything to do with the original Tesla tube company. And in fact, the most really popular tubes, Mullard's, Tesla's, all have been reissued. The names have been either bought or just repurposed. And the tubes themselves, in some cases, are built identically to the historic tube, but in most cases, not even that. They're just, they're just riding on the coattails of a famous tube name. What else have we got in here? I'm trying to find a tube with a, a dirty base. That one's clean as well. I'm getting thwarted. They're all nice. Well, what's in here? Oh, these are beautiful tubes. This is a 6L6. This is a Phillips. Jan, Joint Army Navy, 6L6 WGB, and what we've got is the G just stands for glass, and the B is the series. So this is a little later, 6L6. It's made in the U.S. So you can see on this, this is what I've been looking for. You can see the pins are showing a little bit of corrosion. It's a 50-60 your old tube. Let's get the box out of the road. So, what do you do about corrosion? So, you could chemically treat the corrosion. You could abrade it. You could get out some sort of a little mini tool, like a Dremel. You wouldn't want to put that bit in there, but but I'll show you how I clean vacuum tube pins. In my store I carry a really fine little miniature knife made in stainless steel. They're really quite beautiful. Don't do this over your tube tester, but this is this is what we have for a camera view. So get your blade out so that you've got a very fine tip showing. An exacto knife will work perfectly well as well, but you're often snapping off the blades for a nice clean sharp one, and of course in an exacto knife you've got to have to replace the blade. So these snap blades are really beautiful for that. Don't try this with a big utility knife. What you want is something really fine so you can get into the corner. So what you do is you get your knife up against the base, and you just scrape away. This is not aggressive. This is really very gentle. So I went in one direction, all the way around the other direction, 
all the way around and now it's starting to clean up really nicely. In the store I have a selection of brushes. I have nylon. I'll show you what you want nylon for in a minute. I have stainless steel. This is the hardest brush. This will take off the most material. And I have I have brass. So in this case it's not in bad shape. The pins are normally made out of uh, alloy of brass and they're tinned in the case of this. A lot of octal tubes. This is an octal. Eight pins. A very common arrangement. You can see here actually here's something good to show you. The, the pin alignment part broke off. So you can see what it hides in there and hides with the connection, the last connection to make the vacuum and then seal it off. That's molten glass that sealed it off. It broke off. If that happens, figure out where pin 1 is. It often will say on the base. If it doesn't, what you have to do, and I know I bought a pair of these, is find another identical tube or a very similar tube, so a Phillips 6L6 in the same basic configuration. Find another one and locate the pin and then what I do is I make a little mark and I'll actually I'll show that to you in another video and then you've got to be very careful. You can't plug a power tube in the wrong way. They have to go in the correct way. So, we've scraped the pins. They're not that bad. I don't want to be too aggressive. I don't want to take off the tinning. So I'm using brass. Brass is a good brush for that. So I'll go around this way once and I'm basically doing a little finer cleanup. Boom, that's done. That's a that's a nice looking tube. Let's grab a beautiful gold pin tube. Here's a little signal tube. This is an ECC83, European version of the 12AX7. Look at the gold plating. You're not going to take, there's absolutely no need to take this and scrape it. And there's definitely no need for stainless or brass. If you're going to do anything to this tube, if the gold is looking very dull, you might just basically dust it with a nylon brush. Same thing, once or twice around in each direction. Oh, look at that, it's coming nice and polished now. That is just a very thin electroplating on there. You do not want to be aggressive or you're going to lose all of your gold. You don't want to lose your gold. That's not common. This is a premium tube. This is much more common. You can see the dull brass. Now, with the small signal tubes, you just do the same thing. You just go around and you just clean it up one direction and then you come back the other way and do the same thing. And you use enough force to bring the tube mostly clean. It doesn't have to be perfect. The inside has usually no contact in the socket. It's all on the sides anyways and we're cleaning up the sides, front, sides. Now if this brass looked in really good shape I would take the brass brush to it and that would be the end of it. Most standard pins really need the stainless steel brush. So that's why I carry all three in the store and most of them need a fairly aggressive mechanical brushing to bring them up to a nice looking bright finish. And it probably only takes a couple of passes each, each direction and you're done. Okay, last thing to show you. This will be a two part video and the next part we'll actually test some tubes. Is a pin straightener. This is an antique pin straightener. It was provided by CBS probably as you know, handed out the way today you get a, a stir stick for free. CBS um, 
made a tube called the Hytron. And of course, CBS was a broadcaster. CBS bought tubes from some of the best manufacturers in the world. They mostly were a rebrander. I don't think they had a manufacturing facility, but they had superb tubes that they would put their name on. So here's a pin straightener. That's for the smaller, less common type today. This is for the 9-pin. Nine 9-pin nine miniature. And boom, Bob's your uncle. I'll do it a couple of times. And that makes for a nice straight pin. I've never seen a pin straightener for an octal tube, but you do find these pins to be bent. So let's grab something. If you get a bent pin, get a nice set of needle nose pliers and get in there and very carefully just gently wiggle it, move it over until you've got it straight. Take a look at it. Take your time. You don't want to be forcing these pins back and forth or they'll break. Okay. Oh, if you've watched till the end of the video, I'll show you some discount codes for my store. There we go. And in the next video, we're going to fire up the tester and I'll show you how we test tubes. See you later, folks.